It's the week of October 21st, 2019, and we're here to help you with something really spooky, and that's making decisions. Luckily, we've combed through Kickstarter and found some really nice picks for you, so you can come and check them out now. If you like 4X games, then boy, do we have the game for you. Europa Universalis, The Price of Power, is a huge 4X games taking place more grounded instead of in space on Earth, where you will take the role of one of the major European nations and spread your influence throughout the continent, putting spies in other people's provinces, and maybe even trying to set up trade routes to Asia and the New World. This really is a hardcore game where the, you get a dex of cards that give you different either advisors or abilities, lots of different kinds of troops, a huge map to spread your armies. It really is just taking 4X, as, pushing it as far as it can. But like I said, this has a more medieval, more grounded setting, not in space like Twilight Imperium. So I think that would attract more of a realistic kind of 4X instead of the weird spaceships and stuff and alien species. Yeah, we actually played a rough early version of this uh, at, I think it was, it was some convention a year, year or so ago. Some board game convention. <laughs> I can't keep track anymore. <laughs> uh, and it was, there was a lot there. It's a, cool to see this, you know, they've clearly polished it a lot up the components at least. Yeah, um, uh, we couldn't play full game because if you haven't guessed from this, it's not a game you just casually sit down and play, you know? Yeah, this is a... yeah it's, it's a new version too. It was based on, I believe it was a video game and mm -hmm. also there was a tabletop version of it and they're like famous for being very long. I think this one they've trimmed it down a little compared to those, but still a huge game. Yeah, there. I mean, you can just tell from this and the base is $99, but there's a deluxe version which pretty much adds it looks like I think most of Russia, or a good chunk of European Russia, I guess I should say, most of Russia stretches all the way to the end of Asia. <laughs> so if you want to go even more and have more countries to play with, there is a lot of options there for you. I mean, if you like Forex, like I said, I think you have to take a look at this game. Zombicide is back again. I know there are a lot of expansions that's been back many times, but now it is back with the second edition of the base game, the Core Zombicide, which has been reworked, new components, new artwork, new rules, new tweaks. Uh, this is, if you aren't familiar, a modern day zombie fighting game. You are working together with your friends, moving minis around on a board, trying to shoot all of the zombs that you see. Uh, some of the big changes they're highlighting in this new edition, it's faster, streamlined a little bit, so it won't take you as long. Uh, and uh, some of the rules tweaks include things like you, uh, the friendly fire is lessened, so it's harder to shoot your own friends by accident if you're trying to hit zombies instead. Things that generally make it a little bit friendlier, a little bit more straightforward, but hopefully to give you that same kind of experience that the original did, the satisfaction of going around killing zombies. Uh, this also has an option for a campaign expansion. Uh, so you will actually, it's not legacy, but you will progress through a storyline. You will gain new abilities and upgrades as you go. Uh, and they're also launching as part of this uh, campaign, the RPG, the Zombicide RPG. So there's a whole lot of things you can back related to Zombicide. It's a lot. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm about to ask you about some things I think you probably wouldn't have caught, but I'm a completionist. Probably Did not. Did they mention it mixing with previous Sets. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, my friend, uh, there is an upgrade kit. So if you have the original one and you don't want to go all in for this, then you can get just the upgrade kit to bring your original components up uh, to this standard. That is really nice, I think, especially with the second. I mean, we were just talking about second editions <laughs> yeah. uh, in our previous video. Right, right. Now, the second thing is exclusives. Do you know if they have new ones or they're bringing back old ones? That I did not see. I didn't see any mention of exclusives. I, maybe I just missed it. It's one of those things that are always hard to find. <laughs> so I don't blame you for that one, especially if you don't know the old ones right but right. the final one which i think you wouldn't know because i feel like they should advertise it did they bring up their digital tableau they i don't see that either the tebaru uh, system which i'm pretty sure they confirmed it's compatible with yeah i did mm. not i don't think that they maybe like maybe somewhere in like the frequently asked questions that i didn't dig, dig into too much or the comment section but it's certainly not front and center them saying like plus this thing is coming with it i would have loved to see the answers but like the things you said are really good i mean an upgrade kit i think is at this point, a must, yep. you know, for this kind of thing. It wouldn't, how, I don't know how many expenses. You mentioned there's <laughs> so many. So to feel like you have to start all over from scratch would have really hurt. I mean, an RPG sounds really cool. Throwing the campaign, I think, because if you have a lot of those extra stuff, you can really make that campaign fun. 
Probably uh, uh, still a great place for veterans and new players alike. Yeah, well, it's $99 for that just the base set. Of course, there are different tiers for how much you want to add on or cheaper if you just need the upgrade set. So check it out if you're jumping in for the first time or upgrading a new. We're going back to another game that we uh, got the chance to check out at a small little convention you may have heard of called Gen Con. This one's from Three Headed Monster and it's titled Beyond Humanity Colonies. Like I said, we actually got to try this, so you may already, if you watch our videos, may already know what we're talking about. But if you don't, this game is set in where Earth is overpopulated, so you're starting a new colony on a new planet. So you're gonna be working on building this colony. It's sort of semi-cooperative, you all have your own little goals, but if the colony collapses, you all lose. So you do have to work a little bit together. And you'll work to build up this colony, and whoever does, works the best at getting the points and doing their goals is the true winner. Now, the real interesting thing about this, I think the reason why you should take a look at this is this is one of the most integrated di like app digital games to tabletop games we've seen. The way it works is actually like a mini computer as the centralized, centralized tower. And you'll be scanning either cards or your own little chips. And I'll tell you like to play different abilities. And you'll actually attach buildings. They're pretty much minis with uh, these, in essence, cables. But they act as like completing the circuit. And the buildings will actually light up. So you actually make this whole integrated electronic city, which will actually tell you information. You, if a building has a yellow or red light, that means something's going on there. And then the app itself will also tell you like how many votes you have, and they'll actually look at your actions. And people it will remember how you vote or how what you did or didn't do, who built certain buildings. So it really is this crazy, almost really is a video game, it feels like at the point, like just crazy civilization game. And there are difficulties too. When you start off, you actually choose, it gives you a host of plants to choose from and tells you if they're easier or harder. So then you can also do that. There is a full co-op mode and a solo mode as well. So this game is just doing a lot of things we have not seen before. <laughs> it is insane. Uh, if you didn't watch our impressions, go watch them again to plug that video. But uh, it's just crazy to see this thing on a table. There's so much happening in front of you and behind the scenes with that app. Uh, and people who don't like app games, just stay away from this because <laughs> like, it's you're not going to like it. But if you're okay with that technology integration, this does it in like a really unprecedented way. It's no, crazy it's stuff. It does in a way that makes like, because you have to. Keeping track of all that stuff just, I don't think would be possible. And that's what I like about it. They're doing something like, let's make the app meaningful. It's necessary, yeah. Yes. It's not just a gimmick, yeah. But uh, this is a new crazy thing in miniatures, so it's gonna have the price tag of $225. It's big. It is big. But <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> it is, like I said, something that we have not seen before. So I think it's, at least, give it a look. It is, if you like any of those civilization kind of building games, I feel like this is the, that kind of game that will, you'll have nothing in your like it in your collection. Now let's get to some smaller titles in case you don't want to spend upwards of $100 on a Kickstarter. Uh, this is called Spire's End, and it is a solo game, or you can play it with two players cooperatively, based on or inspired by a lot of 80s-influenced uh, kinds of role-playing games. They cite Planet of the Apes and Monkey Island, among others, some that don't have primate, primates in the title, uh, as influences as well. Really cool art style, really sleek, interesting design. It's a story-driven RPG-style combat game. There's a deck of cards that is really big. They show a comparison picture to a normal size deck of cards, and it's like nice, huge cards with a lot of text and cool drawings on them. And you're traveling through a story. You flip cards. You read the chapters. You decide what you want to do, where you want to go, and occasionally you will encounter combat in which uh, it's kind of it's basically a, a dice-driven combat. You use uh, your own health to to carry out the attacks and different actions, and then you have a chance to recover that health in different ways. But the, you know, they think the the meat of it, what's or at least for me, what intrigues me is that story part of it and these gorgeous cards and the adventure that they're trying to put you on. So it's uh, a few multiple chapters that you play through, and there are different endings and paths that you can take. But it is essentially a one and done. There's only one story. It's not randomly mm -hmm. generated or anything. Okay. You're going through it, kind of like to choose. 
your own adventure game uh, from a while back. Uh, but it seemed cool. It just seemed like a really cool design. It does definitely seem cool. It seems also to be like if, a, if they reference a movie from before <laughs> 1990, it's going to catch your attention. I mean, Planet of the Apes and Monkey Island, the reason I remembered those two is because they're like two of my favorite I just properties. remember because last week's Kickstarter also had the alien. <laughs> oh, it was Die Hard and Alien, yeah. Hey, the, you know how to get me. Um, so if you want to explore a crazy new land uh, by yourself or with a friend, uh, this one is for $30. It's called Spire's End. Next up we have Kohaku. This is a game all about building beautiful koi fish ponds. And you're going to do so by collecting tiles and trying to match them together with the right colors to get the most victory points. There's going to be a central sort of board area, and you can choose two tiles. They have to be adjacent to each other. Afterwards, you can put them anywhere on your little grid, but there's obviously going to be ways you want to put them together, like the red flowers want to be near red koi fish. White flowers near white koi fish, the frogs that you want to be near insects for them to eat, so on and so forth. So it's all about picking what tiles work best and maybe picking tiles so they're not next to your, make good picks for your opponents to be next to each other and really trying to maximize your points. Really simple thing beyond that. Uh, the other cool thing I really like was the deluxe edition. They actually have acrylic tiles and they paint them so that like the koi fish is at the bottom and like the stuff above the water is on top so it really does look like, you know, the fish are underwater, all the other things are above it. So That's neat. <laughs> it's a simple dog thing, but I think that's a pretty cool idea. <laughs> yeah, I saw this one too, actually. I, I also thought it looked like a, you know, like basic, like simple, like you said, like pretty much, you know, tile laying, making patterns and stuff, but seemed like a like it'd be a pretty fun good for a family or just casual game environment uh, you know it's got a, the theme is a koi pond like what's more relaxing than that we should also mention it does have solo too so maybe if you don't have that family uh, you can do that as well but for $29 pretty good deal and more if you want to get that cool deluxe version Zestria, I think I'm saying it correctly, I don't know, uh, is from Valiant Game Studios, and it is an interesting little card game based on Romanian culture developed by people of that heritage, uh, but with a tongue-in-cheek look at the society. You are in control of different lands and different people inhabiting those lands, and there are a few different phases to the game, but the core of it is that you are trying to get other players people to marry off with your people and you're trying to negotiate and make deals to make that happen so you have to actually pay for a wedding for example and you can debate upon how much each party is willing to pay uh, for each side there are also things like fate cards that you can play that or that may come up upon you that will change things events that will occur that could be negative may be good for you uh, or that you can play to try to sway things in your favor uh, a very interesting, weird theme. These types of, for some reason, there's something about the any game that has like a theme of marriage or, or bloodlines and er, ancestors and er, heirs to the throne or whatever it mm -hmm. may be are always interesting to me. Yeah, I something mean, I, fun I have about that it. historical one. Uh -huh. uh, you remember that one? This is like way early on in our Roll for Kid career that we got this one. Uh -huh. It's just. Because it's sort of a, you know, we're, it's a magic game. You're trying to get good pairs. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's fun. There's something cute about it. Uh, and this has a fun art style. It's, it, looks, it looks pretty unique. Uh, so take a look at it. It's only $26. If you think you've got a fun group for it, check it out. Those were our picks. There are some giant ones in there. If you're looking for big minis, if your wallet's not already spent from things like Oathsworn uh, earlier this month, then you can check out some of those or some of the smaller ones. Let us know. We're interested to hear from you in the comments. Are you taking the chance on Beyond Humanity Colonies? Are you going in for more Zombicide stuff mm -hmm. or Europa Universalis or hey, none of the above? Let's not throw out those smaller games too. Those I are also interesting picks and also... Don't hurt the wallet as much. That's yes, very, very true. Actually, you could get all three for the price of one. <laughs> yeah, you could get three games for the price of one of the others. That's up to you. <laughs> Let us know, of course, like we said down in the comments below or any of the other places we are. But until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Kickstarter Pickstarter. We want you to like and subscribe, and if you have the chance, take a look at our Patreon. Stay tuned to our channel for tons more tabletop gaming content. You don't want to miss it.